This video is about how to prepare a certified translation of an academic transcript from Spanish into English. And I'll be using an actual one-page transcript from a college in Mexico. And it has some special challenges that I want to highlight for uh, translators who are new to certified translations in the United States. Um, this one's already been translated, but I'll be going over some of the decisions that I made and explaining uh, some ideas for how to research terms and how to make the finished transcript sound natural in English. So, uh, starting with layout, I think it's a good idea to put a placed image, a JPEG or a PNG file of the original document at the beginning of your translation so that whoever receives it, usually a college in the US, will be able to compare it with the original if the applicant also sent that to make sure that they're looking at a translation of the same document. Even if they can't understand the foreign language version, um, they can compare and see that it corresponds. So my first page will be the original second page is a translation into English and that runs on to the third page and then in this format I've put my certification statement at the end. So let's just start at the beginning. We have the Colegio Superior de Gastronomía, la primera universidad gastronómico en América Latina. And it's probably too hard to see on the screen there so I'll be indicating with my cursor what I'm reading and then um, describing the translation on the right. Uh, there was an image of a fork, knife, and spoon um, on the left, and so I've put in brackets on the right logo. And if anybody wants to see what the logo looks like, they can look back at the original. And then Colegio Superior de Gastronomía. Um, colegio is not really a cognate for college. It's closer to a school in English, but a Colegio Superior um, doesn't have an exact equivalent in American English, and so I decided I was going to call that a college. Um, it might be a technical school in certain contexts, um, but I put College of Gastronomy. Um, another good choice is to leave the name of the institution in the original language and then in brackets put the translation. So if you take that route, then you would type on the English side, Colegio Superior de Gastronomía, probably with no accent marks, and then in square brackets after that put a translation, um, College of Gastronomy or the Gastronomy College. If it has a, an official English name, you might find that on the website and use that name in your translation. Then underneath, um, I've also italicized the subtitle, uh, which is the first gastronomy university in Latin America. And because they use the word universidad in their subtitle, I decided that college, college being a kind of university, or I guess university is a kind of college. Because those are such similar terms in English, um, that I could use college as my translation of the Colegio Superior. And then we have the student's name, which I've made anonymous. I have a permission to use her records, but I still didn't want to show it. Make sure you protect the confidentiality of your translation clients. Um, she was enrolled in Licenciatura en Gastronomía. There's no exact equivalence in the United States for Licenciatura um, because it's a, a bachelor's level university program followed by licensing by some government agency and so I use bachelor's degree as the closest equivalent. And then historial académico, you could put academic records but transcript is the usual term in American English for that. And so this is another case which will come up several times in this lesson of using a loose translation so that it more closely corresponds to the cultural equivalent rather than being a um, overly literal translation of the original. Then I've arranged, um, I made a table here, I'll click on that so you can see a little better. Uh, there's a table to keep everything straight and in rows. If you want to just use tabs to do this, uh, you can, but uh, it tends to get messy and then if the formatting is a little bit different, like if the margins shift or you open it on a different computer, it can uh, mess up your rows. And so I just went to insert table and then created a big table here and then adjusted the sizes of the cells so that they would 
be similar to or at least suggestive of the format of the original. So we have all the semesters broken out um, and I checked to make sure that all the numbers were the same. Transcripts have a lot of details and it usually mm, makes more sense to put your finger on the screen or on the paper if you've printed it out of the original and then your finger on the translation to follow along and make sure that you haven't skipped a line or added anything or repeated anything. So for clave, I use code in English for materia, subject, and for calificación, grade, um, calificación is the most common word for grade in Mexico. Other countries might use uh, nota. And I'm just going to read the Spanish and the English that I chose. Estructura y diseño turístico, tourism structure and design. You could say tourist structure and design. That didn't sound quite right to me. You should be translating into your native language. I'm a native speaker of American English, and so I can I have a feel for um, how universities tend to name their classes over here. But if it's a new area like gastronomy, then I might uh, spend a little time on the website of an American gastronomy school and just read through their course catalog to get a feel for what they call similar classes here. Comunicación y relaciones públicas, communication and public relations. Preparación de alimentos, food preparation. Química de alimentos, food chemistry. Introducción a la industria alimenticia, introduction to the food industry. Servicio de alimentos y bebidas, food and beverage service. Here we have um, alimentos and bebidas, both of them plural in the Spanish, and I've decided to leave them singular in the English. We could say foods and beverages service or service of foods and beverages, but food and beverage service means the same thing and sounds more um, colloquial, more um, natural. Administración, you can translate that as management depending on the context. I left it as administration here. Persona y sociedad, people and society. It really means person and society, um, and maybe a college in the U.S. would use that, but I liked people and society. Um, that's just a judgment call. Research techniques for técnicas de investigación. Investigation can mean, in some contexts, investigation in English, but in the academic setting we call that research. Second semester, contabilidad básica, basic accounting. And then we have some repeats. I'm not going to repeat the second and third levels of these classes. Um, informática. I've put information technology. There is a field called informatics in English, but it's much uh, of a rarer term than information technology, which I feel is a synonym. And we have uh, group theory for teoría de grupos, uh, menu planning for planeación de menús, Mexican culinary heritage for patrimonio gastronómico de México. There's different ways you could express that in English. Then some repeats down here to the third semester. Patrimonio Gastronomico Internacional, International Culinary Heritage. Uh, Química, okay, those are repeats. Here's a new one. Restaurant Accounting for Contabilidad de Restaurantes. Commercial Law for Derecho Mercantil. There is such a thing as mercantile law, but um, commercial law sounds more natural. Operación de alimentos y bebidas became food and beverage operations. Again, they're plural in Spanish, but singular in English. Same thing. Desarrollo de la creatividad, creativity development. We could have used development of creativity, but don't use development of the creativity. Doesn't need the definite article in English. Fourth semester, um, nutrition from nutrición, employment law, from Derecho Laboral, Marketing from Mercadotecnia, um, Microbiology of Food from micro Microbiología de Alimentos, um, History of Gastronomy was Historia de la Gastronomía, Ethics from Ética, and administration, Financial Administration from Administración Financiera. In the fifth semester, I used um, pre-prepared and preserved food to translate 
prefabricados y conservación. And here's an example of something that's just more compact in the Spanish original, but didn't sound, didn't make sense to me in the English. If I'd used uh, prefabricados y conservación, if I translated that as prefabricated and preserved, it would have, I think in Spanish there's a little bit more of an implication that these adjectives are standing in the place of nouns and that noun must be foods. And so I've taken the liberty of adding foods. If you're uncomfortable with that, you could have put foods in square brackets to indicate that it was implied in the Spanish original. Purchases and storage for compras y almacenes. Macroeconomics for macroeconomía. Uh, marketing of services from comercialización de servicios. Um, that's here we have marketing translating a different term than it translated in the previous semester. Um, probably not the exact uh, connotation in the Spanish original, but it's the closest I could come up with. And I should mention here that this is a translation, a certified translation of a transcript. It's not a um, credentials evaluation, which is a different service, and sometimes a translation is sent to a credentials evaluator, a foreign credentials evaluation service, as part of a university application in the U.S. But a lot of universities just ask for a certified translation, and then if they have questions about what was covered in a particular course that they don't recognize, they can go back and get more information from the catalog of the original institution. Geogastronomy for Geogastronomia, that's one I had to look up, I never heard of, but it does exist in English. A gastronomic theory from Teoria Gastronomica, food and beverage cost control as a translation of control de costos de alimentos y bebidas, promotion, advertising and sales for promoción, publicidad y ventas, microeconomics for microeconomía microeconomía and personnel management for administración de personal. In the seventh semester we have a couple of repeats, higher level courses, and then specialty cuisine, Mexican and French, cocina de especialidad, mexicana y francesa. Food and beverage, okay that's a repeat, restaurant management for dirección de restaurantes, you could say direction of restaurants, but that would be confusing to the um, speaker of American English who didn't understand the Spanish original. Dirección is the, the office of the director or the manager's office in English. Um, viticulture and enology for viti, viti vinicultura y enología. Restaurant marketing for comercial, comercialización de restaurantes. And then Seminario de Titulación in Spanish became Graduation Seminar. So this is a, a seminar class um, leading up to your titulación, which is receiving of your título, which is the government credential tied to your bachelor's degree. And so um, this was my attempt to encapsulate that idea um, succinctly in American English. During the eighth semester, um, the new classes were Specialty Cuisine, Italian and Asian, Cocina de Especialidad, Italiana y Oriental. We do have Oriental food in English, but it's fallen out of vogue and may be considered offensive uh, by some, and so I've used Asian instead of Oriental. Uh, food production um, from Producción de Alimentos, co Coctelería, meaning the Oh, study of cocktails, the production of cocktails, just became cocktails in English. Instalación y mantenimiento de equipos became installation and maintenance of equipment. And human behavior from comportamiento humano. Then down here in the bottom section, acreditando 331 créditos de un total de 336 créditos con un promedio de 8.14 Se expide el presente en Ciudad de México. This is, sounds really awkward in English if you just leave it in that word order. And so I've juggled around these two sentences, imposed a, a more natural English uh, syntax on them, and actually combined 
that sentence with the following one, which was, para fines de índole informativo que al interes interesado convengan a los 22 días del mes de julio de 2021. And I've rearranged it all into an order that just sounds better in English. Um, but it covers all the same information, nothing has been added or subtracted, and so it's an accurate translation, an idiomatic translation. This document is issued in Mexico City on July 22, 2021, certifying 331 credits of a total of 336 credits with an average of 8.14, and may be used for information purposes that the graduate sees fit. Maybe informational purposes would have been a little bit better here. I'm going to change that right now. Oops. So some, some key terms that I adjusted here are in el interesado in Spanish legal documents. We see el interesado a lot. You could say the interested party in English, but that um, in the context of a transcript, I've never seen that in an American transcript. And so I put the graduate um, might also be the student if the person has not yet graduated or the person concerned or the person named might be other options. Also, acreditar, to receive credit for. Uh, there's no single verb that means that in English. And so I have uh, expressed that idea through more than one word. So. Again, the Spanish was acreditando 331 créditos de un total de 336 créditos con un promedio de 8.14 uh, became uh, certifying 331 credits of a total of 336 credits with an average of 8.14. So the beginning of the Spanish ended up here in the middle of the English. Se expide el presente en Ciudad de México. Um, this document is issued, this document from uh, el presente, which implies a document in Mexico City, and then uh, para fines de índole informativo que al interesado convengan um, may be used for informational purposes that the graduate sees fit, went here at the end of the English version, a los 22 días del mes de julio de 2021, ended up here in the first phrase in English on July 22nd, 2021. And the formula of saying a los 22 días del mes de julio de 2021 is, uh, is common formal phrasing for a date in Spanish, but um, it's I feel that it's more formal in English to say on the 22nd day of July of the year 2021. If you want to spell all that out in English, you can, but I wouldn't expect to see it on the corresponding U.S. documents. So I have um, chosen more concise wording in my translation. Then we have a signature. I just put signature in square brackets to indicate that. And a rubber stamp. I put rubber stamp in square brackets and logo. If you want to describe the logo, you can. If you want to say the rubber stamp is red, you can. Not required by any end user that I'm aware of. I use the same um, naming uh, conventions for the school as in the uh, letterhead. And then here we have the name of the academic director of the school, you might use principal if it's a high school. Um, if it's a university, you might use uh, the dean or dean of academics. Um, those vary a little bit from college to college. And then down here in the footer, I've tried to reproduce the uh, name, the address as close as possible. Now this is, some people will argue with me, um, some people will leave an address exactly the same. Um, some people will translate sections of the address. Because the original Spanish is available in the same document for reference, I have taken the liberty of changing Mexico de Efe to Mexico City, of changing CP, Código Postal, to Postal Code, spelling that out. Because I just wanted to be convenient. I'm thinking if the person who receives this at the U.S. University only knows English, um, and they're curious, what is all this text down here at the bottom? Is this important? Is it somehow pertinent to the person who's applying? Then I want to explain to them what, what is going on, what's this talking about? Um, and so I leave things in Spanish that I feel um, don't need to be translated. Um, and then I put in English anything that has a clear and common English translation, such as telefono becomes phone instead of telephone because we call them phones more often than telephones here. 
and the URLs and email addresses, of course, remain the same. Then I use this line made of hyphens to indicate that the translation is over. And in this case, I put my certification statement at the end. You can put it at the beginning, too. It all depends on your style. I actually use a letterhead for my certified translations, which I have omitted in the interest of simplicity here. Here is the certification statement I would use on a transcript like this. I, Marco Hansen, certify that the Spanish translation above is, whoops, the English translation above is complete, accurate, and faithful to the original document shown, maybe to the Spanish original, to the Spanish original shown. I cut and pasted this from another translation before I started the lesson. So you adapt your certification statement to the job. I'm a Texas Master License Court Interpreter. It's probably not pertinent for academic purposes, so I would say I am a I am an American Translator Association Certified Spanish and English Translator. I hold a Master of Arts degree in Spanish from the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Now, none of this stuff here is required for most universities, um, but I just have it on there as part of my boilerplate. It adds a little bit more credibility to my um, translations. If you don't have it, that's fine. Very few universities require you to have the ATA certification or degree in the language um, to translate in the US, but you do need to add your signature and your contact information. Mine would be in the footer, which I've omitted from this sample, and the date signed. And then you can sign it either digitally by having a JPEG of your signature that you cut and paste into the Word document and then export the whole thing as a PDF, or you can actually print it out and sign it and then give that to your client. So in review, uh, for an academic transcript, make sure that the universities or evaluating bodies, sometimes it's like the Board of Medical Examiners, Make sure that they don't require any particular format or certification or wording on the statement from the document that you're preparing. And if they do, um, either make sure that you can provide it or refer the client to somebody who can. And then include a, images of the original. If there's multiple pages, then you would see an original followed by a translation, followed by another original of page two, followed by the translation of page two, and so forth. And then just go through carefully, think about how each one of these classes would be expressed in English. Do some online um, research if you have to. Sometimes it's a mysterious course name and you have to go back to the website of the university that issued the document or on occasion even email the university and ask them to uh, explain what the course is about. Maybe get a copy of their course catalog and read that there. And so transcripts can take more research than other documents if it's for a major that you're not familiar with yourself. But try to make the English version sound natural, um, even if it's from a country with a different educational system, just as a favor to the employee at the new university who's receiving it so they can get a, a general idea of what this applicant studied back in his or her home country. And then once you've put it all together, go through and double check it. Make sure all the numbers are correct. Um, get your proofreader to go over it. And then uh, prepare the final signed and certified copy. And export that. And if it's someone local, print it or mail it to them. Or else um, give them the, the PDF. Uh, just some general tips for um, certified translations in general. Um, remember that... Uh, it's good to charge in advance as a translator, especially if it's for someone you don't know. Um, come up with a quote, uh, give it to them in writing, and then collect payment, and then agree to a deadline when you're going to turn it around. For a document like this, I would probably ch charge $50. Uh, this video is being made in 2021, and I live and work in Austin, Texas at Texan Translation, and we charge $50 for an uh, Spanish translation. If it were another language, it might be $60. If it were really fine print, this is pretty fine print, but um, it's also spread out, and so there's really not as much text on here as you'd find in other kinds of documents. Let me just do a word count of the English. This is uh, 473 page, uh, words. 
um, in the English translation, and a typical uh, page of text averages 250 words. So this is actually pretty dense. If you want to charge by the word, you can do that, but the problem is if you're just getting a, a scanned image of a document, you have to go through and count by hand. There's no quick way to get a word count out of that, and that takes a while. So I've just gotten in the habit of looking at a page and estimating, yeah, that's about an average length page. I'll charge my standard rate of $50 for that. Or maybe you'll have a uh, a small, medium, and large uh, type of charge and use a small charge for things like driver's licenses and medium for a standard page of text and large or long if you're doing a legal size page or lots of fine print or extra research like an academic transcript. But whatever it is, you come up with the rate and you give it to your uh, clients in advance and if they agree in writing by email then you um, collect payment however you want to charge for that and then you prepare the translation and uh, make sure that you get it back on time um, so that everybody's happy with the service and they'll refer you next time and send more work your way. If you have questions please uh, write them in the comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.